You begin to lose a path the further you dwell into the misty forest, but continue in the direction you're all sure will lead you to the next town. Every step seems to sink in the muddy ground from the pouring rain, and the day begins to turn darker as the sun sets. I shall light a torch so we can get through this faster. We not need to rest. Yeah, I would rather leave this forest as soon as possible. It's really starting to smell. <gasps> You trip over a hard object and fall face first into the ground. Your mouth is full of mud mixed with the taste of iron. Blech. Some of this mud. Blech. It doesn't it doesn't taste like it tastes like what the hell is going on? Moving the torch around, you see more of the forest. The thousands of skulls of bones scattered about and behind the trees. In the distance, a lake, a scarlet colored lake. The smell of iron and death fill the space around you. As you continue to gaze upon the red lake, you all start to hear voices, screams, blood curdling screams, frantic prayers, and pleads of mercy. The sound of the voices take over the drum of the rain, and then you see something. Someone above the lake. A trail of blood comes up from the lake and twists around the being in the blood-drenched robe. As your eyes follow the trail, you finally see its face, or what was meant to be its face. Blood just seems to drip from the opening of the hood, but you all know it's looking at you. Nope. Yeah, no, no. No, thank you. No, 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 no. Get out of here, guys. Yep, oh, cool. Let's just leave this guy to his business. <sighs> He's gonna be right behind us. Yo, so this dude used to look like this. And now he looks like this. <laughs> Pretty cool. And yes, I have gotten into miniature painting after being gifted some Warhammer minis. Thank you, kind champion. And since then, I have bought a shit ton of paints and tools. My collection is still growing. Be careful with this hobby. And now I thought it would be cool to do a miniature painting series since I got all the things for it, but not in a way of like being super technical and teaching you guys how to do it. Cause honestly, like I would not too good at it. I mean, I'll show you some cool things I do, like this blood trail. Look at this thing. Because first of all, I kind of just do whatever feels right. Uh. <laughs> I'll get that later. Of course, I did look up on how to get into miniature painting, which I suggest that you should do if you have not or and want to get into it. I will link some cool channels that I've been watching a lot of down in the description. They will help a bunch. And I should probably pick that up. <laughs> and before getting into the lore of the blood harvester for the blood god, here are the paints and tools I used to paint this little dude. And this is why I named it the blood harvester for the blood god. This technical paint is so freaking cool and one of my favorites. But why did I go for such a whole bloody look for this mini? Because I was obsessed with making my demonets of Sonesh, my whore, 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 whore hammer, my Warhammer minis to be blood covered demon chicks. And I did attempt to do so, but I didn't like it. And now I got more paints and tools yay, than I had before and can do it way better now. And I wanted them to be blood themed because they reminded me of the creatures from the Descent movie. Now that's a pretty Descent movie. I like that movie. <laughs> but yeah, I enjoyed the whole blood filled home cave that they had and how disgusting and gross that bloodbath scene is. It's, it's pretty gnarly. <laughs> Thus is why I turned this reaper into the blood harvester. It makes for a really cool scene and character. The 
The story goes back to when villages started being built near this forest. You may ask, why did they build homes near a terrifying and dreadful place? It didn't used to be that way. There are varies of its beginnings, and you can choose which one to believe in. The one where a warlock misread a spell? Or witches who opened a gate to another plane? Or an illusion gone wrong? To me, it was simply the most unfortunate day to have happened. The day that two strange travelers visited each and every village surrounding this forest is one that many have chosen to forget as it's not the most exciting story. Word was passed from each village's council of the man with a scythe and a taller man in a purple robe. The hard part was that they could not explain how the two traveled to each village within a day. They strolled through the towns not speaking to anyone, but just admiring and observing. A lot of people assumed they were from the capital due to their behavior and stature. And they visited my home. It seemed to be last on the journey and I wasn't sure to avoid or speak to them. They approached the sanctuary and I, I couldn't. I couldn't bring myself to be like the others. I couldn't confront the two, so I stayed back in the distance watching. My friends, my family, they met face to face with the two men. I could barely see their faces, but my people were terrified and shaken. I remember them telling the two that they have to leave and they do not belong on this plane or consequences would occur. He didn't care. He handed the scythe to the man in the robe and... It's dangerous to shed this much blood of the Fae. It's a curse to do so, especially by something so demonic. The others of the Fae Council fell and the man turned his heads towards me. He knew. I saw who he was and I knew that I had to fly as quick as I could out of the forest. My old home. I don't tell the description of the man's face when I retell this story and hope that you will never have to see him. Hope that you never have to see the blood god in your entire life and his harvester. Your life slowly crumbles at the memory of his face. Not because of how he looks, but how much evil he knows within him. It breaks your very soul. I am the last fey guardian of this forest, or what it used to be. Now the blood harvester for the blood god is its new keeper. Sorry, kinda dark, but I mean look at him. A cool thing I did with this is making the blood trails and the drips, which are done so by fishing line and using E6000 glue or any similar transparent glue and a shit ton of toothpicks. Because damn, that glue gets pretty messy. And to clear things up, this lore is not relative at all to the Warhammer lore for the blood paint and the blood god. And now that my obsession of blood-drenched minis have been satisfied. That was kind of weird. I will not be drenching the next ones in blood. Probably feels a little bit still. And this kind of video was a lot of fun to do. Also, my painting recording setup was not the greatest, but it will be a next time. I'm so sorry.
As always, thank you to my awesome patrons for helping support Crunk Taytoon and being a part of this journey. Over on my Patreon, I try to keep my collection of work there and put up extra content to enjoy, as well as on my Instagram. I'm trying to post more often on it now, which is way better than how I managed it before. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, see you next time! <laughs>